Space Marine! Space Marines. Space Marine. Space Marines. Space Marines. Wow. Space Marines! They keep getting bigger. Just look at the size of this hulking behemoth. Where can I, too, alter my genetics beyond the bounds of normal humanity? Where can I find a clean source of that bane juice? I'd like to thank Games Workshop for two things. One, sending me this copy of Legion's Imperialis, and two, for listening to the community. The scale creep has gotten out of hand. I'm glad they have resized things to something smaller that can slowly grow with us over the years until it is, once again, too big. But with these models in a smaller scale, it offers an opportunity, and yes, a challenge as well. Just how hard can I go on the tiny man? It's so small you don't really need to blend, but what would that look like? You can see the example here, I have three shades of gray, looks all right, but what if I dissected that even further with maybe seven shades of gray, possibly white and black? You can see the effect that the stack of tones has on the volume of the object you're looking at. So what if I apply this to the same tiny man? I don't necessarily have to blend, but I will have to leave space for every shingle on the rooftop, so to speak. In the beginning, there stood a lone tiny man atop a once magnificent sculpture, now broken down into bits of rubble. First, we will cover said sculpture with a nice coating of prairie ochre. All right, now I have a foundational color to work upon. So I'm taking more prairie ochre, but this time massaging in a little bit of burnt turf. Some of these upward areas, I want to start rendering some dimensions. But yeah, as with wet blending, I'm not paying as much attention to every individual texture. Just aiming to kind of bring out the more dominating mounds. Get the platform that he's imposing upon. There we are, getting some nice thick amounts of paint in place. You can always go back to these deeper, less coated areas with my original prairie ochre and just hammer it in there. Overall, I want the base to appear very light because this is going to make the, the darkness of the model stand up that much more. So, yeah, we'll keep things kind of mid and light on the base. I think that'll provide a nice separation of materials as well. And while I'm at it, things are still somewhat damp, but I can always re-dampen the area that I want to work on. Let's be taking more of this burnt turf and then combining some ice yellow into it. You can see I'm just making sure to raise up all of these, these volumes in some of these tighter areas. I'll throw a little bit more burnt turf in there and then some ice yellow, just like so. You can see I'm Ignoring the details to an extent, creating some, some texture by stippling my wet colors together. And let's take care of that platform. I think I'd like him to be casting a shadow so he looks that much more imposing. So we'll just draw these, make sure there's some dark lines attached to his feet. But all the other area around him can be brighter. Just like so. Let's take some burnt turf, blend that into the back. Yeah, so I'll just be giving it a general work over like so. Tiny man is cooking right along. Now I'll take some prairie ochre, adding black into that to deepen it slightly. I'm going to dilute it down and you know, the same as I was raising those mounds in certain areas, I want to go and take care of the recesses with this deeper mixture. Just pushing a little bit more shadow into some key areas. There you can see some of the sharpness that's being brought into the picture with some deeper shadows. And yes, I of course would like to bring some highlights into play. I'll be taking ice yellow mixing it into burnt turf wherever appropriate maybe some pure ice yellow doing a little dancing but 
You can see how this is coming together. There's a lot of small textures. You know, I just want to make sure that this uh, tiny figure is rendered with very lifelike proportions. So I'm down to the edging and blending, just the general kind of smoothing, rendering. So I'll be getting this base whipped together, and then we can get to the main course. Tiny Man, 40K. Okay, let's see how much depth we can render into this Tiny Man. So I've laid out for myself Regal Blue mixed with Black, some Regal Blue, Royal Blue, Crystal Blue, and Arctic Gem. So first up, let's get an all-over coating of that first Regal Blue and Black mixture. Nice deep start. Okay, challenge time. Going in there with pure Regal Blue. Kind of start laying out my map. With this first pass, of course, I want to go very broad with my colorings. I, I hope to fit a lot of colors inside, produce a very high contrast. So, yeah, this is challenging, but that's the fun part. All right, sure, two colors, easy enough. Now I'll continue to slice the pie, bringing royal blue into the picture. You can see it is very similar to the last color, but that's the goal. A nice gradual escalation. And I can still, you know, I want to make sure that I'm going broad. It's so small. But I'll do my best. Keep segmenting these blends out. Hmm. Not bad for a tiny man. Now, bringing pure crystal blue into the equation. And I want to keep in mind that he's casting a shadow, so I'll leave the front of the shins a little darker. Uh, yeah, I'll just produce some fine kind of edge highlights and or just circular segments. Plenty of room to work, no problem. Look at that, an edge highlight. Okay. <laughs> the colors are fitting together. Not bad. Very carefully. All right. Let me keep this up. We'll jump back for the next step. Okay, tiny man, let's see how you enjoy just the smallest dash of Arctic Gem. This may be the final color that I'll need to click things together. So just a tiny dot and or slash of Arctic Gem. Most of these, I mean, I guess I can throw it onto the knee pad as well. Just the smallest sliver, slightest tooth of light would be catching. God, press very lightly. The harder you press, the wider the line is going to be. And yeah, a situation like this requires some delicacy. Oh boy. Gotta get some in there a little on the chest. So I'm kind of using, I'm hanging on to these details. He has the, the chest strap, so I can paint over the chest strap a little bit. Here, I'm just gonna drop a you know a dark slice down into his neck. Yeah, this you know the harness for his power pack. It's okay if I get a little paint on that. I can corral things slightly. Yeah, just some little bumps. We'll see how I feel after completing this step. Okay. I like it, but I cannot resist just going a little bit further. I'll try to keep these dots located in the upper bust of the area, you know, the, the face, the chest, the shoulders. Let's drop some tiny little taps. And yeah, all I've done is taking some of this Arctic Gem, 
the addition of a little bit of white. I think that'll set things off. Yeah, just those little gleams. Try to get some right up in the chest area as well. Yeah, you can see I'm tapping down so lightly. This is a challenge, but that's the fun part. Time for some heavy metals. You can see I've already got some gun metal laid in place. I'm just using on the, the sword, the weapon. I'll have to get his little, uh, backpack harness as well. And on the hilt, I'll hit the little uh, sideways mohawk, the, uh, the helmet broom. I'll hit that with some true copper as well. I think I can get away with a little bit more on the metallics, you know, scale and the amount of colors I'll have to pack into it compared to the armor, but we shall see. Starting to slice the pie now. Um, again, I'm not sure how much will be needed, but the casing on his pistol as well as the holster, get a similar progression as I did with the armor, and I'm just using black and dark neutral gray. I may have to introduce some white at some point, but we'll save a little time. Just these uh, teeny little details to peck away at, but worth noting. Continuing along on those metallics, I could use a wash, but maybe I'll try to blend a little shading, you know, kind of do the equal and opposite, that kind of non-metallic metal approach to things and just sweep some diluted black instead of dousing it with a wash. That might get a greater uh, control this way and yeah he's so small. Probably just thin down some black paint in some of these dense areas and just juice it upon the model. Tiny man coming right along. I have some dragon red mixed black into that to deepen. I'll be using molten orange to brighten, but yeah, just like, you know, the same case with those, uh, the black and grays before. We've seen this kind of processing and progression, but I just wanted to share a little bit of a look at how the reds were coming together. I'm going to try and pick out the texture in this helmet brush the best that I can. Yeah, just keeping everything uh, tight and compact, you know, trying to have large shadow and mid-tone areas. That's what we're after. Also, I'm going to tempt fate, try to paint some eyeballs on top of where there are no eyes, but he will need to be able to see. So, uh, it worked. Surprise! And also, while I have your attention, taking just a very small amount of shining silver, trying to cap off these metallic progressions best I can. Yeah, just a little touch of the lightness to lift everything up. Be able to drop in a very fine edge highlight on his tiny slashing blade. Not too shabby. Let's take some very diluted talisman teal, drop it down right above the hilt. I just licked my brush, I'll admit it. Then you know, taking that empty brush, it's gradually kind of blending, you know, pushing things down towards the bottom of that hilt. I'll have to do multiple passes so I get a very gradual accumulation. But yeah, I want to imply some of that crackling energy. And I'll also be giving a similar treatment to the boots. I'll take my burnt turf, watered down ever so slightly. You can see just glazing it over the boots. You know, I like kind of a weathered, dusty look to my models. A little uh, in the field kind of presentation. So it makes sense to just sweep the same similar color to his base down on these boots and much like painting rust I'm going to let it dry and then lay down another layer things overlap and accumulate more gradually 
especially on a you know such a tiny fine surface. Yeah, three passes later, that talisman teal. Not bad at all. Heh <laughs> look at that. Ain't he cute? There's something very appealing about both large models and yet very small models. I had a good time painting up Tiny Man, and in hindsight, it ignites the imagination even further. The idea of working in this more epic scale, creating a larger landscape that you can still carry outside of your house. Yeah, waves and waves of dudes pushing into other dudes. A very colorful warfare. Anyways, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm always thinking about other things, and I hope you are too. I hope you're thinking about a way that you can take this approach and apply it to your own models and see that maybe blending is not always necessary, especially when approaching something that you would like to have a more textured result or something very tiny like this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for your support on Patreon. As always, it is ever meaningful to me. So until we meet again, my friends, remain unchained.